Welcome to another Earth Science Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Buss, and this podcast will be discussing Alfred Wagner and his continental drift hypothesis. We'll specifically talk about evidences for the continental drift hypothesis that were proposed by Wagner, and also we'll be discussing why his hypothesis wasn't accepted until after his death. Alfred Wagner, shown in this image um, on the left, was known during his lifetime for his accomplishments in meteorology and polar research, and here he is shown um, in a picture taken in Greenland uh, in November of 1930. Um, he was 50 years old. This that picture was actually taken right before his death on this expedition in Greenland. Um, he was buried by his um, companion on the right, and his companion's body was never found uh, after this expedition. Well, besides being a polar researcher and meteorologist, Alfred Wegener today is most known for his continental drift hypothesis. And so the, one of the first evidences that um, Alfred Wegener noticed is that the Earth has land masses or continents that look like they used to fit together like pieces of a puzzle. So then when Alfred Wegener began looking further into this continental drift hypothesis that the continents have been moving around, he really, you know, looked at, wow, there's some really similar features where we look like the, the land masses used to be together. You see very similar rocks and mountain ranges and formations um, that are separated by very vast oceans. So perhaps at one time those uh, ranges used to be together and have just been separated apart over time as the continents drift slowly away from each other. Oops, that should have been I I there. A third really strong evidence for continental drift, the idea that continents have been slowly moving apart over time, is that we find similar fossils where the land looks like it used to have once been together. And these are, you know, fossils of plants and animals that could not have crossed vast oceans. And so based on our ideas of speciation, we know that we, you, you're not going to find identical species coexisting just without being able to um, breed. This, this could not have mated with that animal. And if you have an animal that is separated by a distance, you learn in biology that that's, you're going to have different species. And since we find fossils that are the same species separated by oceans, we can only conclude that there used to be no separation at the time that the animal was alive. And so this is actually a, an extremely strong evidence for a continental drift hypothesis this idea that these fossils are found in ranges and that these ranges had to have been connected and these animals and plants could not have existed separately being separated by oceans as you see the continents separated today. A fourth evidence for the continental drift hypothesis is magnetic polarity evidence. Now this is the most confusing to understand of all the evidences that we've looked at so far Basically, the idea is this. The North Pole and South Pole bar magnet of the Earth, which is shown here um, to the right. Well, first of all, remember that it's backwards. The South Pole is actually of a bar magnet, and the Earth is towards the North, and the North Pole is actually South. But let's forget about that. That's not a big deal. We'll, we won't worry about that for now. But just know that the magnetic pole of the Earth is wandering. It, it, it constantly is shifting and moving. Now also know that the continents are shifting and moving, or at least Alfred Wegener is proposing that the continents are moving. So we have these two moving entities, the North Pole, South Pole, magnetic poles of the Earth, and the continents. Well, you can actually look at rocks on the continents, and rocks that formed back in time will have formed with iron in them, and they'll have formed directionalizing where the North Pole was at the time. So what we see is, in this image on the right, it doesn't make sense if we don't take into account continental drift. Rocks from Eurasia okay, are showing that the North Pole in the past has been in those regions at 100, 200, 300, 400, and 500 million years ago, which is not what rocks that formed in North America are saying. They're saying that the North Pole used to be here. Well, the North Pole can't be in two different places. It has to be in one place. 
So why the difference between those two lines? Well, the fact that North America and Eurasia have been moving and shifting. So when you take continental drift into account, then the magnetic pole wandering actually makes sense. So Alfred Wagner, world traveler, meteorologist, first person to take polar ice samples in Greenland, you know, he came up with this continental drift hypothesis. And, you know, Pangaea, Earth looks like it used to be, uh, fit together, the pieces of the puzzle. Um, when you look at those pieces, the edges looks like, look like they used to fit together. Mountain ranges correspond to each other. The fossil record um, corresponds to the continental drift hypothesis. The magnetic pole of the Earth also makes sense when taken into account continental drift. So, great idea, right? Alfred Wagner, um, everyone agrees with him, right? Actually not. During Alfred Wagner's lifetime, continental drift hypothesis was never really accepted by the scientific community. So with all those great evidences, why? Why was continental drift hypothesis rejected by the scientific community in the early 20th century? What's the deal with that? And I think the answer is actually quite simple. The Earth is ridiculously immense. And so scientists were saying, what's the mechanism? What is causing continents to move? Because they're huge. What could possibly move a continent? So the how and the mechanism, the what is actually moving the continents, that is the reason why the hypothesis would not, was not accepted until later when we were actually able to get more evidence towards it and towards the mechanism and what's actually moving the continents along the planet. And that concludes this podcast on Alfred Wagner's early 20th century continental drift hypothesis.